So here was the last example. We're going to carry on from the exact same point. Now, what we did was we defined the standard grid system. So a grid system of one to 16 cells on a single row. We had all those classes defined and the dimensions of each cell, but we're only on one resolution here, which is the desktop resolution. However, what if we have multiple resolutions? What if we want our grid to slowly break down over certain media queries, over certain different screen sizes? So for example, if I was to go to, let's say the tablet resolution, could I get this to break down further? So can it go to four cells here and then with the full resolution go to 16 cells? The answer is yes. Now we could write this all out manually in CSS and there are ways that you could make this kind of tricky for yourself in SAS. But we are going to be using again the advanced features of SAS to ensure that we do the minimal amount of work, which is work smart. So use those smart advanced features to our advantage. So work smart, not hard is the principle here. So what I want to do now is create a map. And what I'll do very quickly is I'll just comment this out. Now there is a little bit of a bug with the SAS compiler. You'll notice if I save this, I'll get an error. And that's actually because of this escaping that's going off here. So I actually have to delete that. So I'll just save that for now. So there is a little bit of an issue. The comments don't negate the hash and the parentheses. It's still trying to look for the variable I. And as you've commented it out, so there is a bug in the SAS compiler. So just make sure you get rid of that. So once we've got rid of this and we can start to look at what we're doing here, what I want to do is I'll create a variable called map, simple enough, and it's going to have a value of a map. So to create and define a map, you open and close your brackets and in there you have your key and value pairs and then you separate each key and value pair with a comma and what I want to do is have the key name as the value of the media query so for example at let's say 850 pixels we have a value or a range of 1 to 12 columns or rows however you want to put it and then also I can have another media query at 450 pixels with a range of six. And then also I can have another media breakpoint at 318. You could just keep going with this and I'll set the range to three. So now that we have our media breakpoints right here, 850, 450 and 380 and the ranges, which is one to 12, one to six and one to three, we now need to create a for each loop. So I'm going to use the each directive and I'm going to create a variable that will store the key name and a second variable that will store the value of the key. And then you need to say what map or maps are we going to look at and iterate over their key and value pairs? Well, I'm going to target the map within my map variable and this map contains multiple key and value pairs. And so on the first iteration, key will be equal to 850 and val will be equal to 12. So that is the first key and value pair assigned to those variables. And then we go and iterate through the other key and value pairs. So key will be 450 and val will be six. And then finally we iterate through again and key will be equal to 380 and val will be equal to three. So all we're doing is we're iterating through, meaning we go one by one by one through these key and value pairs. And we're just assigning those key and value pairs to these variables down here. And then we can start to use those values. Now we know the key is the media breakpoint. Now you can be more literal with the naming of your variables. So you could say media, media breakpoint. It's entirely up to you, but I'm just going to be very, very literal here. And the key value is the value which we want to generate our media breakpoints from. And the value is the range. So don't forget we had the range right here and the range will tell us between one and how many maximum amount of cells we're allowed to have when the screen gets resized to 850 or 450 or 380. 
And now I want to generate the media query using at media. And then I'm going to say this is for all types of media. And I'm going to provide the max resolution. So I'm going to say max width. And then we want the breakpoint to be the key value. Now, once we've done this, what I need to do is just generate a little bit of dummy code right here. So it will actually generate the code in the CSS. And I'll just say display none. So now you'll notice that once I've saved this, and I'll just delete this out for now, what you'll notice is we have a media query at 850, 450, and 380. Those are our three key values. And then we're just placing in some dummy information. But now it's time to generate the classes that I can apply to my grid system. So at the moment, I can set the default cell amount. So we'll set that to 16 again. Now, what I want to do is say cell hyphen 850, for example, and then set the number of cells that I want to be in the grid when we hit 850 pixels. So I'm going to set that to the maximum of 12. So we have the class name cell, the breakpoint, and then the cells that we want to display at that breakpoint. So that's 850. Then you have the next breakpoint, which is at 450 pixels. So when the grid gets to 450 pixels, we want to set the maximum of six, and then we want to go to 380, which is three. So I'm going to say six. And cell hyphen 380 is the breakpoint, and I want three cells to be displayed when our browser's resolution gets to 380. So now we need to generate all of the classes for the different breakpoints of 850, 450, and 380. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to copy this for loop, and let's just collapse that now, and paste it within our media query because that is where I want the classes to be generated. And then I'm going to say I from 1 through to val, and then I'm just going to write this all out and I'll explain it to you in just a second. But I'm just going to write key. And then after that, we need the value of I. And then that's it. All we need to do now is make sure we save this file first of all. Otherwise, it won't be overwritten in our IDE. And I can just save this. And you'll notice what it is doing now is it's producing all of those media queries, 850. And it's producing all of the classes that calculate the width of the cells if we apply a particular class. But now I'd like to walk you through this code. And I've just noticed real quick that with my media queries, there is no pixel measurement values right here. It's just numbers. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to say, right, with the key, say plus PX. Now, even though that's showing up as a little bit of an error, you'll notice if I save this, you will see the pixel measurements show up. So now that we have those pixel measurements and our media queries will work properly, what I want to do is just very quickly take a look at what we've done. Starting out with what we first originally did, which was create our map, which contains key and value pairs. And the key names are the breakpoints and the value is the range. So at the media query 850, we have a range of 1 to 12. So right here, I could say cell 850, 1, 2, all the way up until 12. It's entirely up to us. And now that we have that, we want to iterate through the key and value pair. So I say, look, look through each key and value pair within the map variable. That's where our map resides. And I want you to, every time you iterate through each key and value pair, going one by one by one, and each time it's assigning the key value to the key variable and the value of that key to the val variable. Again, you can give these variables whatever name you'd like, but I'm being very literal. Then we are generating the media queries. So I say at media and so forth, and then I say max width. And then we are targeting the value that is stored within the key variable, which will either be 850, 450, or 380. And that's exactly what we've got here. And don't forget, you need to say plus pixels to make sure we add the pixel measurement in here to make it valid CSS. Now, once I've done that, let's take a look at the code that's being generated. And the for loop is simply generating all of the classes for 
that particular breakpoint. So for example, 850 has one to 12. So we have cell 850 hyphen one all the way through to hyphen 12. And likewise, we've got the same for 450 and 380 as well. And if I very quickly take a look at this, I'm saying, for, so I'm creating a for loop and we're generating a variable called i and this variable starts from 1. So we're setting the start and initial value from 1 to how many? Well, 1 through to val. Now don't forget val is the range. So if it's on 850, val will be equal to 12. If it's on 450, 1 to 6. If it's on 380, it's 1 through 2, 3. So that's all we're doing there. We're setting the max right there and saying don't go over that. And now we need to generate the actual code for our classes. And we need a little bit of maths in here, which is 100%. Again, we need to make sure we put in those measurement values, very important. And again, we need to make sure that these are valid measurement values. So we are working with percentages here. So we say 100% divided by how many cells we want on a row. And so we go one through to 12 and so forth. And now once we've done that, we go ahead and target our grid element and we need to generate the different classes. So I've said cell hyphen and then I provided the key. Now, why have I done that? Well, don't forget we have the key after it. So cell 850, one through to 12 again cell the key name and then the amount of cells for that breakpoint so that's the naming convention for my classes so i put in a hash and said look inject the value of the key into my class name so that will either be 854.5380 and then i i is whatever iteration we're on so 1 through to 12 so it would go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 12 like so. So i is just being iterated, meaning going one by one by one, all the way up until the max, which will be, let's say in the case of 850, 12, and then it stops. And then we're just injecting that in, targeting the div elements, because don't forget we want to target these cells or div elements right here, and say, look, we only want so many of these div elements on a single row. And then we're setting the width to whatever value is returned from this equation right here, which will return a percentage. So if I wanted 12 cells on a single row, it will be 8 point da 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 percent. So once I've gone ahead and done this, it will then repeat the same thing for 450 and with 380, it goes from one to three, like so. So this allows me to generate a lot of code. You can see the size of this file to the size of this file. It is not very long at all, but because we've used some advanced features, we've saved ourselves a lot of time here. And now what I'd like to do is after generating all of those classes to do with the different media queries, I want to bring back the original cell classes. So this is the default that's set. And then as the screen resolution decreases, we will then break the grid down. So what I shall do is I shall uncomment out all of this code. And also I had to take this out right here. So I've got to put it back in again. So again, we have a maximum one through to 16. There's our range. We have the for loop with the variable that's going to hold the iterable value going from one all the way through to the value of 16. And then we have the equation 100% divided by however many cells we want. So one all the way through to 16. That will then give us the width we need. Then we need to generate the class. So we say cell hyphen, and then we input the variable i. So that will be one through to 16. And then we target the div elements, and then we set the width accordingly. Once I do this, I'll save it. And you will notice now that we have cell one all the way through to cell 16, and then we have our media queries. And if you wanted to shorten this down real quick, you could just say one through to 16 right there. There's probably no point in having a variable there. So we can save a little bit more there as well.
So now that we have generated this code, it's time to test it in the browser. And so what I can do now is you can see that I have 16 div elements and I've set it to cell 16. So by default, 16 cells on a row. But what happens when we hit the 850 breakpoint? Well, if I keep going down, we've now hit the 850 breakpoint. And if you take a look at this, we have 12 cells max on a row and all the other cells have been shoved down. And then I can keep going and then we hit the 450. Now with the 450, we have six cells max on a row. And then finally, keep going down, you get to 380. And 380, we said a maximum of three cells on a row. So 383, if I set that to one, now then I can go back into the browser, hit refresh. You'll now notice only one cell is allowed to be on a row within our grid at the 380 breakpoint go up. Now we've got 456. Let's change that to three. That's acceptable. It's between one and six. So now I'm going to change that to three cells at the 480 breakpoint. There we go. Nice and easy. Go back up again a little bit more. And with 850, we have 12. So I'm going to change that to six. Again, it's within the acceptable range of one to 12 for the 850 breakpoint. Hit refresh. And there you go six cells at the 850. And then when we go past the 850, we go back to the default, which is 16 cells. And again, I could decrease that again to something like four cells on a row if I really wanted to. So play around with these values and just have a good play with this nice little grid system that we built in SAS. And you can see by using these advanced features, we have not learned them in vain. These advanced features allow me to write a few lines of code, which yes, takes a bit more thought than just writing it all out and just doing the maths. But this isn't really adaptable. I can now change this grid system very easily. I can change the breakpoints by changing the key names. I can change the ranges and I don't have to rethink it all through. I can just very quickly adapt this code and I can create a completely different grid system. So it is wonderful, it's fantastic, and that's why we learn the advanced features in SAS.